Hi viewers, welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Adiola Fayon. Now in this segment, we'd like to talk with a Nigerian that lives in London that we really appreciate uh, what she's doing. She just published a novel, by the way. Her name is Tolu Lokbek Pukwola. She's a writer, a blogger, and she's been described as a voracious reader. She was born in Lagos, Nigeria, but she moved to England where she got her university education in accounting and business economics, and she got her master's in finance and investment. She started writing a blog in 2006, and she took a few writing classes before she created an online fiction series called In My Dreams It Was Simpler. Now she started writing for magazines. In 2008, she left accounting to concentrate on writing full time. Now she writes short stories, flash fiction, and articles for many print and online magazines. Now Nothing Comes Close is her first novel, which we will be talking about. And she lives in London with her husband and daughter. Tolu Lokbe, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much, Jayla. Nice to be with you here. How are you today? Hope everything is going well. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Yes, thank you. Great. So let's start from what I just read about you, uh, your bio. It says here that you, you studied accounting, you got your master's in finance, and then you wrote a novel. I mean, what is going on? Why did you decide to study accounting and you are in the, uh, when you are actually a writer? Um, you know, like, when I was in school, everyone kind of tells you to choose a career, choose something that you're going to do when you, when you grow up. So all along, I've, I've always enjoyed writing, but it wasn't something that I, occurred to me that it could be a career or it could be a job. So, you know, I was all about, okay, I'll go to school, finish, you know, finish with my A-level, finish with my degree, finish this, and then get a job. And that was how it, it was. And since um, I was, I enjoyed, you know, like the economics and so on. So I always thought that was what I was going to be when I, Finish, when I finish, I was always going to do accounting and economics, and that was fine. I mean, I hated I hated some of the subjects, but you know, I, I managed to pass them, and you know, getting a getting the degree was easy. Getting, you know, finishing from school was easy. But when I started working, I didn't realize I actually hated the job. I hated my job as an accountant. It was quite boring. Wow. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't creative, and me being a creative person, I hated the routine of doing the same thing over and over again every day. And so I started thinking of what I could do to actually, you know, make use of my creative talents. And that was what made me realize that actually I'm in the wrong place completely. I'm in the wrong job. Hmm. I mean, you know, just to echo what you're talking about, you went to secondary school in Nigeria, right? Am I am I right yes. about that? Yes. I mean, there's this thing in Nigeria when you get to secondary school, uh, especially your senior class, you have to choose either science class or commercial class yes. or you know art class. So I mean, a lot of people back home we look we look up to. Oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. Nobody really says well. At least back then, nobody was saying, I want to be a writer. No, it's not, it's not on your choices anyway. It's not on the list of choices that you have. You, you know, you have the engineers, the doctors, lawyers, and so on. Um, you know, even if you're going to do something commercial, you're thinking more in the line of, okay, I'm going to be an accountant, a banker, or stuff like that. Nobody yeah. thinks of using um, literature, even the, even... Though I was good in literature in school, it mm. just didn't occur to me that it's something that I could do as a career. Yeah. I didn't even know anybody who was a writer. I didn't meet anybody who was a writer. Even though I loved reading books, but it just, wow. I didn't know anyone like around me who was a writer. And I see. So, just, yeah, so but then just, after you finished and you know, you got your master's in finance and all that, you actually worked for some years before you started going back to writing. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, I worked for some years, yeah, I worked in like different companies, I worked in a law firm, I worked in a manufacturing company and so on, but um, doing the same job over and over again after a while, it just became absolutely boring, I hated it. I, I was about to ask, what was it? I was about to ask that, what happened? What, what caused the change? Why did you decide to go back to writing? Um, you know, just, I think I had a bit of a midlife crisis, if you can call it that. <laughs> I just woke up one day and thought, what the hell am I doing with my life? I hate my job. I hate waking up in, on Monday morning and getting on the train and going to work. Mm. And someone was telling me that you, you, you better love what you do because you're going to be doing it for the next 40, 50 years of your life. So I was thinking, huh. there's 
no way I'm going to enjoy waking up every morning and going to work as an accountant for the next for 40 the next years of, 40 50 years of your life no there isn't no there isn't I'm just going to be depressed all my life if I do that so I thought okay I need to find something that I love doing okay. something that would make me excited to get up in the morning and go to work something that you know something that I could be creative with you know something that actually matches yeah. my something my that own. you can use your imagination you know yeah that's so, great yeah, um, so discovering myself was like part of the journey. I had to discover what my real talents were, what my real skills were, and so on. Okay, so uh, let me just ask you briefly. We've been we've been talking a little bit about the book, and you know, I just wanted you to tell us exactly what this book is about. The title is um, oh. <laughs> "Nothing Comes Close." Nothing comes close. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what is "Nothing Comes Close" about. It's um, about Two people, two characters mainly, Lola and Ole, and kind of how their life revolves around um, their their love life, their their friendship, their relationship, and the kind of challenges that they have to face al um, along the way. So, so first of all, these are they are both Nigerians, and this is set in London. So just for our yeah. viewers to know, these are two Nigerians that met in London. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The the book is actually. Well, mostly Nigerian characters anyway. Um, but it's set in London, so Nigerians who live in London will recognize a lot of the scenes in the book and the sessions in the book. And um, so, yeah, Lola and Wale met at a friend's birthday party. And, um, they, you know, they, they liked each other and all that. And then they started dating, but Lola started discovering some things about Wale that she wasn't too sure about and you know a lot of secrets were revealed a lot of um so there were some ups and downs and so on so that's what the story is about and Lola has to decide if Wale is worth all the trouble basically. I see so yeah. the book is a love story so to say and um let me just ask you who's your audience is it the Nigerians in the diaspora or uh Nigerians in Nigeria or anybody? Who, who's your audience? Um, who were you targeting? Well, my, my main target audience would be Nigerians in the diaspora because those are the people I'm writing about. But there's, um, there's no reason why any other Nigerian can pick it up and, and read it. In fact, I think right, reading the book, any Nigerian would even be interested to read about somebody like them, you know, Nigerians like them, you know, our culture, our language, our food, everything that we are familiar with is in the book, is woven into the story. So any Nigerian can read it and enjoy it. Uh, what are some of the lessons, so to say, that people can draw out of the book, like some of the reasons why people should read this book? I like how you had like some African names, some Nigerian names, you know, Fumi, Titi, Lola, and all that. I think that's great. Uh, being that it's set in London, I like the fact that you didn't like try to put in just London names, you know. So can you tell me a little bit uh, some of your uh, some of the lessons, so to say, that people can draw out of this book, or the reasons why people should read this novel? I think people should read it because there isn't enough literature or stories about what we are familiar with. I think a lot of stories we read are about Africans are usually about some kind of war, some famine, some rape, some, you know, really what the West wants to hear. And it's about time somebody wrote a story about, you know, our normal everyday Nigerian people who live abroad. And so that's when I started writing it, I thought I, I want to write about the things that I'm familiar with, the kind of environment I'm familiar with. I don't want to write about war. I don't want to write about rape. I don't want to write about what um, the West will consider as an African story. I want to write a story that somebody like me can pick up and instantly recognize as that is my story. You know, that is what I'm familiar with. So if basically, if you're tired of hearing the same rhetoric about African writing, then you should pick up Nothing Comes Close because I see. That, yeah, that is what you'll be familiar with. That is sort of like your own truth. Uh, do, you, do you mind telling us some of the challenges you had to face uh, before you were able to get this book published? Um, well, publishing is a very weird industry in the sense that you have to prove that 
um, your book will sell loads and loads and loads before you actually even get published. So um, when I started ap approaching the mainstream publishers, they were all telling me, well, it's a good story, it's interesting, I like the plot, but it's not commercially viable, which means they don't think it'll sell enough. Or they'll tell me that, well, okay, we can publish it, or but we only publish it under ethnic fiction. So basically, you just get this much shelf space in the bookstore. You know, like, if, if your book is published under ethnic fiction, nobody will ever hear about it. Only a very, very small wow. section of the market will look out for it. So I thought, okay, rather than going with, you know, that kind of setup, I would um, prefer if I, I can reach my target market myself. I can do a lot of things better than a publisher would do anyway. <laughs> so I thought I would set up my own publishing company and publish the book. You myself. set up your own publishing company? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay. No, tell us about that. Uh, it's called Accomplished Press, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. now you're um, not yeah. just a writer, but you also own your own publishing company. Yes. Okay. Um, I said, yeah, I set up Accomplished Press in 2011. And at the time, I had I had um, some options because I was thinking I could either publish it, you know, using one of the services out there because there are lots of self-publishing companies out there. But I thought um, those those ones will still tie me down to their own contract and to their own terms. So rather than going with a company that would tie me down, I would rather prefer to do it myself and be flexible to make all my own decisions, all my own choices, and so on. So that's what that's why I set it up. And since we set it up, uh, well, since I set it up, it's actually been recognized by um, an organization called Women in Publishing because we got an award last year. Wow. Right. Yeah. How many books have you published so far on your publishing uh, company? Well, I've published Nothing Comes Close, and I've published a collection of flash fiction. And hopefully, um, like in this year, we're going to publish two more, stuff, two more stories. One novel, hopefully, and a collection of short stories. Were, were they written by you or by other authors? Oh, other authors, yeah. That's good. So you guys are making progress. Yeah, slowly we're making progress. But I mean, we're still a very young company. So yeah, I was about to I ask, don't... how do you hope to compete with other big publishing companies? You know, um, I don't think I'm in direct com competition with most other publishing companies because I think I have a niche market that I want to reach. I want to reach the average Nigerian African who doesn't think that there's enough literature for them. So in that sense, I don't want to compete with the big publishers who are already. You know, so you you want to focus on like African authors, yeah? Like yeah. I see. Because I mean, there there are enough publishers out there reaching the mainstream market. Not enough publishers that are focusing on our own series or our own files. So I don't think I'm really competing with the big publishers out there. I I just want to reach my own market, mm -hmm. reach my own. Yeah. But are, are there limitations to uh, are there limitations though to self publishing? Well, to self-publishing, yes, but for in, as an independent publisher, there are not really that many limitations. The main thing is just that I don't have um, like uh, so much clout with the big review companies, the big review newspapers, yes. I have to kind of build up my reputation, build up my relationship with some of the big newspapers and magazines and journalists, and that is going to take a while. I'll probably not be able to do that with my first book, it might take a while for me to, you know, establish my brand mm -hmm. so that it's much more recognizable. With, with but the, but the overall, did the, the book turn out the way you were hoping in terms of marketing and, you know, getting people to know more about it? Did it turn out as you were expecting if you had gone with a bigger publishing company? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very happy with it because I was able to kind of experiment with it until I got it right. With, um, with the mainstream publisher, they... Once you sign the contract, that's it. It's out of mm. your hands. They choose your cover. They choose how they market it. Wow. You know, they might hear yeah, and and so on. But for me, because I'm flexible enough to choose, I'm flexible enough, I can make my own decisions and I can decide, okay, actually, I prefer, you know, this cover or I prefer this yeah. review. I prefer, you know, so I'm able to do things better in that sense because nothing is set in stone until I, I actually right. make 
So, Tolu, let's talk a little bit about the fact that now that you have gone back to your first love, do you feel better fulfilled or you you miss being an accountant and all that? Oh, I definitely don't miss being an accountant. I can okay. tell you that. I hated um, I hated the nine to five routine anyway. I hated having you know so so many restrictions on my time. I have to wake up at the certain time, go to work at the certain time, and come back home at the certain time. So, but now and you are able to do. Yeah, You're now I have my time. Yeah, so okay. now I I can manage my time. I can work at night if Great. I want. You know. So uh, uh, so what do you have to say to an aspiring uh, writer or publisher? So to say, I mean, there are so many people well, out there that are writing, especially yeah. Africans. So what do you have to say? Uh, what do you have to say to them if they think that maybe their dream cannot come true or they have to oh, keep yeah. at the job that they are doing? Well, all I can say for, for for sure is don't give up and don't wait for, um, don't always um, think that you have to wait for someone else to pick you before you make, make yourself a success. Sometimes you have to go out and pick yourself. Sometimes you have to take your own risk. Sometimes you have to take a challenge. But above all, always make sure that you, you put in your best effort. Mm. Because even if even if you even if somebody else says okay I will publish you there's no point publishing a rubbish book to mm. you still have to so make sure develop that you your talent yeah. you know develop your talent make sure that your work is as good as it can be before you actually go out there and yeah. make yourself known to people. Do, do you have any future projects? Anything that you're working on right now? That yes yes I'm already working on my second book. Okay. So. I'm hoping that I can finish that this year, Great. and um, yeah. so that that's one project. Um, okay. I'm I, I'm also writing flash fiction for um, a, a publication, and I'm also doing some um, freelance work on the side. So wow. I still have some things on my plate. I'm doing. So let me ask you where people can find your book if they're interested in uh, reading your book. Okay. Um, it's available from Accomplished Press. And um, from Amazon, from Accomplished Press, Amazon. Accomplished Press, yeah. Okay. It's, um, it's, it's on Amazon, it's uh, Barnes and Noble, Waterstone. Wow. Basically, most of the, the main um, online retailers have them. I see. I'm, um, I'm, I'm working on getting them distributed in Nigeria because that's a whole different market. I but, see. Yeah, right. but in the process of getting it there. Well, um, the last thing that I wanted to ask you to look is, do you have any advice for parents who, uh, who think that there is no um, lucrative career in something like writing or, you know, arts, you know? Uh, can you talk to them briefly about, you know, letting your children do whatever they feel like they are supposed to do? Well, the thing is, um, until you try, you don't know what you're capable of. So a lot, of the, a lot of times we think, oh, I can't do that, or it's not possible because not many people have succeeded in it. But you have to try and do what your heart tells you to do. If you hate your job, try and think about what exactly do I want to do? What exactly brings me joy? Because ultimately, we could have all the money in the world and still be unfulfilled if you are not, if you don't enjoy your life, you don't, mm. you don't enjoy what you do in your life. So really, parents shouldn't force their children to do what makes them unhappy, makes them miserable. If they have a talent, by all means, encourage them to follow it because it's only your talent that can make room for you where you go. Wherever you go, it's only your talent that can make you stand out. You can't, you can't stand out by, being, by forcing yourself to do what you don't like. Mm. And you know, just like you did, later on in life, you went and you took some writing lessons, some writing classes. So if, it, if there's anyone out there and you've just been enduring your job, it's never too late to, would you agree with me, Tolu? It's never oh, too late to, you know, never, go back to what makes you happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, ha I have a lot of friends who found, you know, in Nigeria, they are bankers and then one day they wake up and they said, actually, I, I much rather prefer to do event planning or, you know, makeup or whatever. And it, it, it seems like it's such a big risk for you to leave your comfortable job and yeah. start something not from Especially start. when you think about the financial security aspect of yeah, it, you yeah. know. It, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it seems like such a big risk, but ultimately yeah. the rewards are, yeah. you know, you can't, you can't put it into words, yeah. the feeling of I'm not changed to somebody mm. else and I can do what I want. 
Yeah, but at, at the same yeah. time, the other thing to consider is, do I want to be doing this for the next 40, 50 years, you know? So, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. If, if the thought of doing that, that job makes you miserable and you think I'm going to be here for the next 40 years, then, you know, that's, that's your life, really. That's, your, that's the whole of your life. And if you, if you spend your life doing something that makes you miserable, then that's a wasted life. Mm. Wow, that's a powerful uh, last word to Lulokwe. Thank you so much for, you know, joining us today on Sahara TV. And you um, just told us not to waste our lives. Say yeah. that again. I said I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me on. Sure, it's been a pleasure. So like you just heard, uh, go after your dream, whatever it is. You know, like she said, uh, a life that doesn't go after your dream is like a wasted life. So so that has been Tulu Lokwe Pupuola from London. And I'm sure you guys have enjoyed our time with her. Stay tuned. We have a lot more coming up. We'll be right back. <laughs>